Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fader, I'm an Evolutionary Astrologer and I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology message for the week of February 3rd to 10th, 2018. So what do we have in the Celestial Dome above our heads? <coughs> Excuse me. So we had a, a Blue Moon, Blood Moon, Super Moon eclipse just on the 31st of January. Um, if you live in the Pacific, which is my favorite zone in the world, you were lucky enough to see it. But since I'm in the Mediterranean with all these nice people around me, I didn't get to see it. So, but it is, uh, um, it is something that influences us. More in the Pacific, but all over the globe. And this is an eclipse season. We are heading into a partial solar eclipse on the 15th of February. That's actually the... Um, opposite eclipse to the one we had in August, the Great American Eclipse. This one is going to be at 27 uh, degrees of Aquarius, just opposite the eclipse we had in August. So this time between eclipses is a very special time. It's a time that people feel often like many things change in their personal life, both internally and externally. And it's a time that in a sense, the concrete that cements our life together becomes fluid again and re-hardens. And this is a time that we can create change in our life, both, both inner change and external change, both a change within the scope and the viewpoint that we look outside to the world and engage with the world and the... the um, external influences that we are actually allowing to sip in and influence us and change us and become part of us. So all of these are subject to change. And it's a special time. It's a time that I think we should all pay attention to things that need change in our life and enjoy this time because it's a magical time. It's a time in which we can shape our future. Other than that, uh, there's a lot of Capricorn and we're heading into a lot of uh, Aquarius energy in the sky, both ruled by Saturn in ancient astrology. And that Saturn is in Capricorn very strong. I'm a modern astrologer, but I pay attention to, to uh, uh, Hellenistic and ancient astrology as well. And... What I wanted to say about that is that this is a time to hold fast and carry that weight with a straight forehead and a straight face, and if you can, a smile on that face as well, and walk forward. This is not a time to give up. This is not a time to cave in. This is not a time to make a discount to yourself. And, and forgive yourself for not standing up to things that you need to do in this life. No, this is the time to take the responsibility. This is the time to walk forward. This is a time to consolidate your ambitions and your goals and bravely and, and with a straight back. Excuse me, I have something in my throat. I'm going to drink a cup of tea. Ah! Amazing. Uh, hopefully, no, it's still there. I'm sorry, you can see I'm, I'm tearing up because I just stopped the video because I had something in my throat. I didn't want you to listen to all my coughing. But uh, here I am back. It's still in my throat, by the way. But I can talk, which is better. So we were saying that this is a time to consolidate your dream and ambitions and walk forward bravely not making any discount to yourself and not being too judgmental if you don't stand up to everything you wanted to stand up to. It's a balance that is needed between the two. But right now, this is not a time to lay back and be passive. This is a time to mature. This is a time to take responsibility. And this is a time to do what is right. I'm talking to all of us. The world needs us now. The world needs us to be serious. The world needs us to be 
um, um, something to reckon with. The world needs us to be um, um, responsible and, and, and mature about how we do things and how we take things forward so we could be counted on and we could be trusted and we can become an authority in our own right. So all you light workers out there, remember that the light you are spreading is not just for your own life. It's for our, all of our sakes. All of our sakes. And the world needs you now. So when you feel a little tired and when you feel a little bummed out, just remember um, that as long as we draw breath, I feel like we have a guardianship, a custodianship towards this earth and towards other people and towards animals and the environment in general. So it's not only about us. It's about what we can do to make this world a little better because we have lived in it, as Abraham Lincoln once said. When I was studying in Canada, in Montreal, Canada, in the Interfaith Ministry School, I had to volunteer about 30 hours a week and I had my tuition free. So it was a scholarship and I was very uh, happy to be there in Montreal, Canada and study for free and live there for free as long as I'm doing my service. And part of my service was karma yoga. It's something that you give to young yogis to make sure that their ego does not uh, overtake their better parts. So karma yoga always involves something that could be thought of as a little humiliating to somebody that has an ego that is too, too developed. So my karma yoga was cleaning the whole school, including all the bathrooms and the toilets on my knees. And I remember that one of my teachers said, when you're on your knees cleaning that toilet, you're not cleaning the school's toilet, you're cleaning God, God's altar in a sense. Now it's not that I think that the teachers who sat on those toilets are gods, but it's about doing something without asking anything in, record, in return. It's about doing something for the sake of this universe or this world. And to this day, even when I go to a public restroom, that toilet is going to be a little cleaner. Even if it's a club or a disco or a restaurant, it's going to be a little cleaner because I stepped into it. You know, if I see something on the floor, I pick it up. If I see a drop of water, I, I dry it up. Why? Just that I would feel better about myself for doing nothing, for doing something for nothing. For absolutely nothing. And it's not nothing. It's about me feeling better about myself. So altruism is really egoistic. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they're either uh, blind to the fact that they enjoy it and like it, or they're liars. <laughs> but altruism is what makes us feel better about ourselves and sleep good at night. So take responsibility, guard others, guard this world and make the changes you need to make in your life incrementally, baby steps and stably as much as you can. No giant leaps, please. <clears throat> this week, the third Saturday, we have the moon opposition Chiron. Don't be too uh, critical regarding yourselves or others. It's a sensitive day on the 4th. I mean, the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th are both are all a little sensitive. On the 4th, we have Venus square Jupiter. This is an effect that we felt last week and we're going to feel for the next couple of days as well. So at this time of Jupiter square Venus, we could be too hedonistic, we could be too indulgent, we could be too extravagant, we could be untactful or undiplomatic and speak about things indiscreetly or go overstep our boundaries and go too far, too high, too fast regarding food, drink, satisfaction, love, relationship, and money. So with all of these subjects, just be careful not to overdo it and remain discreet, remain diplomatic, and, and don't be extravagant. Humility is a key word here during this week. Humility and professionality. So on Sunday the 4th, Moon, I'm sorry, Venus square Jupiter, and then a little later on, Moon square Saturn. So this is a time that we could be not as sure about our abilities and strength. We could be too critical regarding ourselves or too judgmental regarding others as well. 
and on the fifth we have the moon opposing Uranus and squaring Pluto. The fifth already is a volatile day. It's a day that we could experience um, outbursts, that we have a much shorter fuse, that we could have all kinds of uh, uh, rage attacks or be uh, um, also exposed to these from the from the <clears throat> from people in our environment because even if these aspects sit well with your chart so you are extra calm and have a beautiful day on the fifth it still doesn't sit that well with others <clears throat> so you can experience from other people in your environment and not necessarily feel that way yourself so what I suggest for the fourth and the fifth is just tranquility and centeredness and not being reactive, not being reactive, <clears throat> just taking a step away from emotions into logic and not getting carried away into them. The sixth Tuesday, not something important that I wanted to say about, Wednesday the seventh, evening time, uh, we have the moon conjunct Jupiter. If you are in the States, that's going to be in the morning of the eighth. But if you are in Europe, uh, this is the evening of the, the seventh Wednesday. I suggest you go out or host because it could be a wonderful night that we can enjoy the company of people. We can enjoy good food, good drink, and generally good hospitality and a feeling of warmth and kinship. So I hope you enjoy it. On Thursday, as I said, this is going to appear in the sky over the US. So enjoy your Thursday morning. Friday, the 9th, the moon is going to conjunct Mars. And when a moon conjunct Mars, we could be more aggressive, we could be horny, we could be a lot more enthusiastic and impulsive. We could uh, be much more energetic, we could be uh, entrepreneurs uh, more than we usually are. But we have to watch our aggression, we have to watch our, uh, from, out from violence and from, from anger. And a little later on, the moon is going to square Neptune. At that time, we could feel a little be bewildered. We could feel a little lost. We could feel um, just un like all that energy just plummets down. So again, finding the middle ground, not being too impulsive and too headstrong in the first part of the day and too passive in the other part of the day. Just balancing these two energies out. And on Saturday, the 4th, Venus enters Pisces. She likes being in Pisces. She's considered to be exalted in Pisces. And it's much easier for us to attain satisfaction and romance and <coughs> a sense, <coughs> excuse me, of optimism regarding relationships, income, satisfaction, love, and <coughs> our own selves. But we could be too naive we could see things unclearly. We could not see our own value or the value of others as clearly as we did before. And that could make us um, overlook things that are important within people that we have a relationship with or things that we draw income or satisfaction from. We can connect to them much easier and we can enjoy them and have romance heightened in our life at this time. But we have to watch and remain realistic regarding the endeavors and the people in our lives so reality won't wake us up with a ringing uh, slap and a little later on the moon is going to square chiron so again it's a little sensitive it's a sensitive night on saturday night just be careful not to hurt yourselves or anybody else but as long as you do enjoy it i want to thank you for listening i want to thank you for commenting and sharing this Last week, a viewer shared this on about 10 groups. I want to thank them very much because Mark Zuckerberg uh, blocks me for three weeks at a time if I try to share this in astrological groups. So your work is, uh, is very appreciated in that sense as well. And of course, for private consultations or private lessons or courses that are all the time opening through the computer or your cell phone from wherever you are around the world, I'd be more than happy if you contact me. Take care. And thank you. Bye-bye.